to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Wi Fi's. Welcome back to yet another underground and under renovation transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Click the bell with the drop down for all notifications so that you will be notified whenever I upload new content and when I go live. I just want to thank my Wi Fi family for your continued support. When channels are small like mine, a lot of times, you know, it can kind of go under <laughs> underreported how much support we actually get but not only do you click on my links you actually spend a lot of time watching them for a channel as small as mine my watch time is really high so I want to thank you for that and let you know how much I appreciate that continue to build this community with me and share these links you know I'm going to continue to bring what I feel like is the best information that I have at the time and, you know, grow a collective consciousness that will help nurture a lot of things that will bring us all success in the future. So thank you. I am giving you my best and I see you giving me the best that you got. And I appreciate that. So today I am going to be talking about is the diaspora for us. Mm. I did a video a couple of weeks back about Emmanuel Acho being Nigerian and feeling as though he is the anger <laughs> translator for black Americans when it comes to white America. And I come across another video again, where yet another African person is explaining their disconnect with the black struggle. When I see black people talking about racism, all that stuff, I'll be like, what is wrong with these people? You guys have food, you have EBT, all yeah. this thing. And you're here shouting about somebody is racist too. Just leave that person and move on. I feel that way. Like, why are they always like complaining? But when Black Lives Matters started happening, like I sat down, I said, I need to actually know why these people are pained. And if we look at the history, what they've done to them, like if you actually sit down, watch some documentaries, how they were maltreated, how the, I don't think if I'm actually born, I will forgive those people. I don't care. It's easier for us Africans that were raised in Africa to feel like they're complaining because we, we were raised through struggle. Like I barely even have water and you, you have water, you're complaining. But then it's not about the basic necessity or about how we are raised. We are raised like, I don't want to say way better. We might not have resources. But there are some way, like our own um, people will not look down on us or put us behind. So it's in their, their nurture that way. Like they just can't overlook it. And if you sit down and watch everything that the, the forefathers have been through for you, I changed my mind. No, they need to be angry. However, they should still move forward. So I have a lot of friends that are pan Africanist. And I have a lot of um, love for the Pan-African movement. I think there's a lot that not just Black people, but the world can learn from African history, literature, culture, customs. And I have a great respect for Africans, just as I do for all citizens of the world. There's a lot of merit to Asian cultures. Um, Asian philosophy. There's a lot of benefits for people who are looking to be cosmopolitan, well cultured, well traveled citizens of the world. Um, in India, you know, in Europe. However, personally, as a Black American, I find that I have the exact same disconnect with Africa and Africans as they appear to have with me. Um, it was really great in the video to hear the woman turn the page and say what I was lacking was information and knowledge. And once I received that, I was able to change my vantage point and my perspective, which is what 
all of the world can benefit from learning from Black American culture. So often we feel like we have to relinquish something about what it is to be Black in America in order to fit into the diaspora. But when I have gone to other places, not just Africa, When I've spoken with Brazilians, we talk about slavery. Yeah, because we survived for hundred years and mm -hmm. we like suffer. Nah, 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 nah. But Brazilian Afro is like yeah. the diaspora. We have to talk about the diaspora. And the African Brazilian is still suffering to today. And like when, for example, it's something that makes me a little upset. You know, like the Black Lives Movement from the Black Lives Matter movement from last year could uh, it spoke out, uh, could have spoke out for Brazilians, true. Exactly. You know? But it's exactly. something that doesn't happen. And, and it, I gotta be honest with you, that's one of the know. things that you don't I, know. No. We don't it's know, him. but it's it, it's it. Yeah. Do we not know or do we not care? Because I can honestly say that the same poison that affects Amer white Americans affects black Americans as well as far as us being self-centered in our worldview, self-centered in our view of blackness. And black Colombians and people who are all over the world but identify as black. They haven't attached their country or their nationality to their blackness. They say that. They say we have watched what black Americans have managed to accomplish for themselves. And not that they envy it, but they want to join themselves to the upward mobility that they've seen in our movements because black Americans have fought for and received and attained a large amount of rights, a large amount of integration into the system wherein once they were slaves. That's the distinction between Black Americans and Africans. Evidently, I didn't make this distinction. They did. And I actually commented on this post and I say, you know, I find this disconnect really, really weird. Because the same oppression that black people in America are infuriated against is the global worldwide white hegemony that oppresses us all. When this woman spoke in Africa about them not having water and food, uh, that's a product of colonization. And so often I'm finding blacks, Africans from other places in the diaspora that don't seem to notice that they themselves are under the same system of oppression that we are. Separating black Africans from the white minority had long been a policy aim. Laws made white people officially superior and the large black majority faced discrimination in every aspect of their lives. Living, doing business or owning land in white areas was banned. There were separate public facilities, transport and schools. Interracial marriage was banned. Jamaicans, you know, Bahamians, when you go to their country and their islands, they're covered in Hiltons and McDonald's. And, you know, imperialism is evident in their countries as well. And the reason why these people feel that we're complaining while they don't have food and water is because of the same power structures that are put in place that keep us from the upper echelon of being able to participate at that level in this country. And are beginning to see the importance of lifting it uh, out of the national context or out of the domestic context or beyond the jurisdiction of the United States government. And the only way this can be done is by internationalizing the problem and, and putting it uh, at a level where it can be taken into the United Nations and then all of the other independent nations on this earth can involve themselves in our struggle and support us. And uh, the only way by this, uh, which this can be done Instead of it being called civil rights in the future, we're going to have to label it a human rights struggle or the struggle for human rights. And as such, we can then take it into the United Nations uh, through the avenues that have been set up by the United Nations uh, Commission on Human Rights. Uh, we can take 
the, our problem before the United Nations in the same uh, manner that the problem of South Africa, Angola, Mozambique, Hungary, the Arab refugee problem, it, it becomes a world problem. And as a world problem, then the uh, uh, Afro-American or the so-called Negroes full results because uh, it's not left up to the one who's responsible for it anymore. But it's, 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 it's uh, put at a level where the whole can see that our plight is wrong. It stood in our path in the, in the uh, past. I mean, they don't participate at that level in their country for the same exact reason. They act like they don't have racism and apartheid. Like Nelson Mandela spent all of his time in prison for no reason. And yes, that is South Africa, which is a different country than a lot of other African countries. But this is still the same continent. Why didn't y'all go down there and deliver y'all brothers, y'all brethren and sisters from oppression under apartheid in South Africa? There was way more of y'all than there was of white colonizers. But what do I know? I feel like if Africa had the back of the rest of the black diaspora in all of these different countries wherein we find ourselves today, we wouldn't see the same type of white aggression that we have here. Case in point, when we saw Asians being assaulted in this country, and listen, that was a mixed race thing because they were being assaulted by blacks and non-blacks and whites. So. They were quick to pass the Asian hate crime initiative. Why? Because America's never beat an Asian country at anything. They didn't win in Vietnam. They didn't win in Korea. They didn't win. Japan showed them not to come over there playing with them. And they don't want no smoke with China, period. So before they let the various citizens of their countries suffer violence in our country, they was like, okay, no, 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 we're going to do something about it. So if America was concerned at all about Africa, if they were worried at all about not having any smoke with Africa, if they really thought you would take your resources from them over your black citizens that are here in America, they would stop fucking with us here. So I really don't want this to be a dividing line between blacks in America and Africans, I don't consider or call myself an African American. I will put it out here that this is a thought process, an ideology, a pathology that I am willing to amend. If I'm missing information, if I'm wrong in some place, and how I'm viewing this and seeing this, I'm definitely open to the conversation and the dialogue. I've had Pan Africanists on my channel. The purpose at the times that we had discussions were about certain aspects of Black and African American culture. So I've never really had just the ongoing conversation education piece around Pan Africanism to fully understand it. I have a historical understanding of it from like Marcus Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois. Jomo Kenyatta, you know, there are several people that have been part of Pan-Africanist movements in America and even their views over the course of their political and social careers changed at times. There are some black leaders that started out more black nationalists like Stokely Carmichael, and then he became more of a Pan-Africanist leader when he changed his name to Kwame Ture. So I have an historical context around these distinctions. However, I have not seen the utility of Pan-Africanism work in a Black nationalist construct within this country. Now, like I said, I'm never going to let these personal private ideologies separate me from good community building work that Black people, wherever they are, are doing. As long as we're doing work to expand Black consciousness, to fit more and more Black people inside of it so that we can find unity and solidarity with each other, I'm never going to be the one that's like, well, they've been African, so I don't want to work with them. And I think that type of intolerance can't be a part of any Black campaign. You know, Black power, Black supremacy, is something to be fought for. And it's something that I believe in our ability to attain it. It's something that we have historically had in every setting where black people have been, we've been excellent. And I'm sorry, 
I don't care what anybody say. Black Americans lead the diaspora in our access and our ability to make changes. We need to use that power to benefit the rest of the diaspora, but we need to be the leaders in reestablishing what Black American culture is. With great power comes great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. And it's time for us to take ours and take our place as Black Americans and forget the victim narrative because we have been given the opportunity to be victors and continue to have these opportunities presented in front of us. But if we don't change our slave mentality... How did we get this mind? You're not an American. You're an African who happens to be an American. You have to understand the difference. Into a victor mentality, we're going to continue to be in these same cycles. But I want to hear what you have to say. Do you subscribe to any one of these perspectives? In the early 70s, we had Black nationalists, we had Pan-Africanists, and we had integrationists. A lot of times when I'm watching media, I see a lot of Black integrationists. They really believe in this system. They believe that our participation in this system will create the changes that Black people need. And there's merit <laughs> to whatever extent in taking that viewpoint based on the analysis that I've been able to have with the different theories I developed a black nationalist pathology around what I feel has been the most effective use of black power and black resources. But like I said, these are the conversations that even moving forward, we still need to continue to have those great black movements of the 60s, 70s and 80s laid a framework and a groundwork. But what are we going to do now? You tell me if you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Well, then go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next episode, you already know what to do. Go ahead and clock out for me. By any means.